Hello and welcome to Computer Games. This video is a buyer's guide for baseball games you can play on the Retron 5. Games will be reviewed with scores given to their graphics, sound, play control, and overall fun from a scale of 1 to 5. And games will be given a final verdict of buy, rent, or avoid. Leading off is Ken Griffey Jr. Presents Major League Baseball for Super Nintendo, released in 1994, published by Nintendo of America. The game gives a great first impression with bright and colorful sprite work. As you give the game a closer look, you'll find appreciable details, whether it be exact replications of real Major League Baseball stadiums, or extra frames of animation that you wouldn't expect to see in a 16-bit baseball game at the time. Overall, you won't find any slowdown in the gameplay. The Retron 5 takes the graphics that looked wonderful back in 1994 and gives them a little bit more depth with its filters, adding the smoothing option. Overall, I give the graphics a score of 4.5 out of 5. They're very impressive, but not impressive enough to make me think that I'm playing a 32-bit system. It's definitely 16-bit in the overall look. Every aspect of the game's audio is exceptional, beating the expectations you have for any 16-bit sports title. The game uses the voice of real-life Major League Baseball empire Steve Palermo to call the action. And along with a famous announcer, the game also had a famous composer. The game was scored by Timothy Fullen, somebody who's done very impressive work in the world of video games. Everything right down to the sound effects will sound like it's coming from an arcade machine rather than a 16-bit home console. On a scale of 1 to 5, I give the sound on Ken Griffey Jr. 5 out of 5 on the Retron 5. Play controls can make or break sports games, especially baseball games. There's many that are simply unplayable because all the outfielders move together in unison, or you really can't control the base you throw the ball to. Ken Griffey Jr. absolutely shines in the area. The game simply has a wonderful, easy to use system to control the outfielders and line up them with where the ball expects to land. While some situations may leave you confused as to what outfielder you are controlling, you will always know what you're doing in the infield. The game's input is noticeably very responsive. There is no delay on this game. Some people have mentioned that control lag is an issue on the Retron 5. I noticed that both hitting, fielding, and pitching felt just the same as they would on a Super Nintendo. Overall, I give the game's controls a perfect 5 out of 5. Whether it's one or two players, I think this game is a blast. The game really does an amazing job of blending arcade and simulation style gameplay into one fun package. The single player experience is challenging, but not to the point where you'll feel angry at the game. While the game does not have real Major League Baseball players, it has some of the best imaginary players I've ever seen in a baseball game. My favorites being the Liberty Bell, Ben Franklin, and Phil Spector on the imaginary 1994 Philadelphia Phillies. The only thing that might steer some away from the game is it has a bit of a high challenge. The computer opponent will show no mercy, but if you're looking for an advantage, just pick the Seattle Mariners. They have Ken Griffey Jr., and while it's not his real name, they have a pitcher that is an exact clone of Randy Johnson. 
Overall, I think that Ken Griffey Jr. presents Major League Baseball as an excellent game. It is a must own if you're a sports fan. It's something you really can't do better than if you look at the Super Nintendo's library of baseball games. You'll find some about as good, not many that are better. However, if you're not a baseball fan, the high challenge may put you off just a bit. Overall, I give the games Fun Factor a 4.5 out of 5. It's an amazing sports title, but not anything beyond that. Some games like NBA Jam have a play style that's transcendent, that simply everybody loves. This is a game that I feel you'll have to appreciate baseball to really enjoy, but again, the quality here is outstanding. With all the great features and the fact that this is a tried and true first party Nintendo game, I consider this a title worth buying. Next, oh no. Yes, it's the rainbow of lowered expectations. LJN has presented us with Roger Clemens and BP Baseball, a very early Super Nintendo release from 1992. And hey, by LJN standards, it's not the worst thing I ever played. In fact, I think it can be enjoyable as a two-player game. The Roger Clemens series is a unique baseball experience in that you have to make your outfielders dive and jump to catch a lot of the balls in the game. The same goes for infielders. It is very tricky controls, but it is at least a unique experience that when played with two players is not totally broken. As far as the graphics go, you cannot get more basic than this. I was surprised to find out that the game was first released for the SNES in 1992. It looks like a Super Famicom game from 1989. does an admirable job with smoothing over what there is to be seen, but there's simply not a lot of content to this game. There's pretty much the view you see for batting and pitching, the outfield, and you will get very small glimpses of the infield. The artwork used to illustrate home runs and I believe some other things like there's a special artwork that comes up for Grand Slam. like clip art, and while it doesn't look great on the Retron 5, it does look better than it would on a Super Nintendo. When you are talking about LJN, you do run into some low points, and the low point in the graphics is the animation used for the fielders. Not only is it ugly, it is done so poorly, it affects the overall ability to play the game. a 2.0. They are colorful, they're by no means offensive. Plain and simple though, this is one of the smallest cartridges you can find on any 16-bit platform. There is just not much of this game to look at. And while there's not much, about 50% of the player animation is unbearable. Moving on to the sound or the lack thereof. There's about one song in this game. I think you get one for gameplay, one for the menus. I'm not sure because it's easy to forget you heard either one. Roger Clemens on the Nintendo Entertainment System actually had a decent soundtrack to it. There was a lot of music. There was decent quality to it. You're really not going to find anything close to that on the 16-bit offering. on the scale of 1 to 5. Again, there's just not a lot here. If there was just a little bit more music, maybe a little bit more quality to the music, I would give it a little bit of a higher score. Moving on to the control. The game really struggles here, possibly more than any other area. When you are pitching, it is easy to control whether the ball is moving left or right. It's easy to throw the ball very fast or very slow. Everything else is almost inaccessible. Breaker 
shifters, curves, sliders. It's either throw in the 90s, throw in the 50s, make it go straight, make it go left or right. Again, this is something where the gameplay has regressed from the NES version of this game. The batting in this game might be its best feature. That is typically the most fun part of any baseball game, so it's not saying much, but it is at least something I can say is not totally broken. Before you get too carried away with my kind words though, I will warn you, most balls you hit will go foul. sum it all up, the play controls get a 1.5 out of 5. I have to reserve lower scores for games that function less than this. And the batting, while it isn't anything that you know, talk about ironically, is something that was decently executed. It's something that you can actually play through. scoreboard. I am playing as the game's cover athlete Roger Clemens on the fake Boston Red Sox and we are getting destroyed. We are going against Kevin Apier. My team is about to put up four runs against a very good starting pitcher but the unfortunate thing is while I do have what appears to be real Major League Baseball players represented by silly names, they simply have no Major League Baseball fielding ability. So what it all comes down to is, when playing this game, when not batting, you'll spend a lot of time doing things you had no intention of doing. And while I have praised the interface you use when, when batting in this game, the way base running is done is so bad I don't know how to explain it. On obvious pop fly balls, your base runners will stand in between the bases and they will do that automatically and never return automatically. I don't know how anybody manages a bases loaded situation where they have to tell all three runners to run back to each base they are halfway from. There is some value in this piece of software when played with two human players. It will be an extreme challenge for both, but the unique way the outfielders and infielders have to dive for almost every ball thrown at them is something that can be rewarding. I will say though, when comparing this to other Roger Clemens games, the, the NES one specifically, the field of play just moves too fast to really be enjoyable like it is on there. When you have the field of view transition from the infield to the outfield, you have much more time to react than the other version. That is another small detail they really, really should have looked at before they published this game. So when reaching a final verdict, I'm going to give a score of 2.0 out of 5 for the game's fun factor. There's some interesting things that can be appreciated by people who like to play bad video games. The physics used when the outfielders throw the ball back to the infield are some of the worst you will ever see on any platform. The ball will float like a UFO, and it might be funny if you have somebody else there with you playing the game. You don't want to be losing to the computer 25 to nothing like me though. At the end of the day, Roger Clemens MVP Baseball for Super Nintendo is a game you should avoid. It is at least interesting to play, however, should you ever come across it. You won't find another baseball game that relies on outfielders diving for the ball. In fact, Acclaim thought so much of the game, it was actually released in 1993 over in Japan. It was crushed by its far superior competition, but we give them credit for having the courage to go out there and compete. Holy algorithms, look at the time. Thanks for watching the episode. That's all for now. Be sure to tune in again soon for more coverage on the Retron 5. You should expect another review to go up within the next week and within the next
next two weeks a continuation of the spring training series where we look at what baseball games you should buy, avoid, or consider as rentals if that's available in your neighborhood for the Retron 5. Thanks again.